Hey everybody, this is a video showing how to weather your car for gas lands or for really for any type of modeling. I know it's been a while since I posted a video, but things have been going on. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So basically, I want to talk about how to add like dust effects to your vehicle. Um, there are plenty of videos that show how to do this. Of that, there's no doubt. None really showing on how to do it on a Hot Wheels car. And this is a really quick tutorial on how to do it. It is by no means a master class on it. Because there are other videos that go more into effect with this than mine will. But this is to give you a really good idea. So what I have, this is the Country Club Muscle Hot Wheels. It is based on a car from the comic book called Freeway Fighter, also from the Fighting Fantasy novel. And like I said, this is just my version. Um, I've gone ahead and done quite a bit to it already. Um, of note, see these bullet holes here, got one there, a dent, really good rip, some more bullet holes there, and some more bullet holes here. And yes, they are exaggerated because at this scale, if you were to use like a, the real scale of what a bullet hole would look like, you really wouldn't be able to see it. Um, so also to note, the body of this vehicle is made of plastic. So that made it a lot easier. I just used a pinning vise and selected my vise size and went ahead and drilled that in. Also just kind of scraped it right there as you can see. Um, and yeah, I'm wearing the blue gloves because we are going to be using pigment powders. Okay, so what we're going to do is, first of all, so you might be asking what a pigment powder is. A lot of places make them. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, they're all pretty much the same thing. Okay, they're just powders that are different colors. The Africa dust, it looks very similar in the bottle to this light dust but I assure you it's not it, it actually is quite brown and then I have this black one also that I just picked up at random I'm not going to use it for this video but just show you there are different ones that you can get and it's going to be a matter of personal taste and preference what you use um, in order to use this product and you're going to have to excuse me one second because I forgot to get one off the shelf um, pigment powder oops sorry can be applied with a pigment fixer okay a lot of places will try to sell you this um, and of note the pigments are about five to seven dollars a bottle but they'll last you a while this is anywhere from seven to nine dollars a bottle okay and once you open it it does start evaporating I don't know why I could have a faulty bottle but it does start evaporating However, I just recently found out that you can use airbrush thinner and do the same thing as this. This bottle cost me nine bucks. And I airbrush quite a bit. And this airbrush thinner, this one bottle has lasted me about four years, even with using it with uh, this with some pigments. I just started using it with it. So yeah, I would recommend using some airbrush thinner, to be totally honest. I guess it has the same type of chemical makeup and bonding compound as the pigment fixer. Couldn't tell you I'm not a chemist. This would give you more bang for your buck. Plus, if you're airbrushing, you probably already have some of this around. So anyway, so you're using this. Now the air now to use it, and I'm gonna apply it onto the tires as well. Because I want some dust on here. I wish the camera would pick it up a little bit better, but I guess it's not going to. There we go. All right. So yeah, we want to definitely get some dust inside the treads of the tire, inside the sipes, and inside the rim. And again, this is just going to be a really quick tutorial. Um, well, I say it's going to be quick. It's probably end up being like 20, 30 minutes. It's going to come in several parts. I'm going to have to pause because pigments you want to give them a little while in order to dry and fully adhere before moving on to your next step so with this vehicle I've already dull coated it after doing the weathering and all that good stuff and 
yeah, sorry about that. Using free DRM music on YouTube in the background and had to skip an ad. But anyway, everything's already been weathered. This was basically, and I go over this on the MechHead Studios webpage, uh, what each color was used and where. But this was a very simple paint job. This was like a beginner's paint job also. Um, if I had thought about it, I would have done a step-by-step -step for this as well but I did not but it is a very simple paint job and a beginner if this is like your first time picking up a paintbrush you can do this paint job and get these type of weathering effects also um, I have another one so I will do a step-by-step -step on that if there is interest for it but anyway let's get to the fixers okay to the pigments so first I want to use some North Africa dust Okay. Um, when you open these suckers up, this is why I'm wearing the gloves. See, that's the color versus the color looks on the bottle. Um, it's usually very chunky. I just used this on a tanks commission. So if you want to get it really fine, easy way to do it, just shake it up real quick. You want to knock it down back into the bottle because this does collect in the cap. There you go, and there's some of the chunks that are in there from the bottom. So, you know, so basically you want to get one of these as well. And these paint palettes, they're like 50 to 97 cents, I think, at Walmart. And I'm not going to be using a lot. You just want to put some in there like that. Now I want to also use the light dust. Again, I'm going to give it a quick shake because I have not used this dust yet. It was intended for my 40k army. However, I decided to go Caracaridons, and they're about the same color as this. So this would be kind of pointless. So again, I'm just going to put a little bit here. Okay, there we go. And that's done. So remember, this is the light dust. There's a number, AK040. I'm going to put that aside. And the North Africa dust, if you end up liking this, the number is AK041. These are both by AK Interactive. Now, for the purpose of this video, I am going to be using the pigment fixer because you may not have an airbrush and have no need to purchase that airbrush thinner. But we're going to, so we'll go ahead and use the pigment fixer. All right. And this is also why I've got a paper here. Alright, so you, what you're going to want to use is light, one of these makeup brushes. Um, let me just say, my wife had a whole bunch of makeup brushes and she just gave me a complete set and they just happen to be perfect for this project. So, gentlemen, do not be afraid to go into the makeup aisle at your big box store and get your supplies. Just telling you straight out. This stuff works wonders. It's a nice soft bristle brush that you want to use. Um, I think these only cost maybe like a dollar or two dollars. You might even be able to find them at the dollar store. So really cheap. So first we're going to start off with the tires. Okay. So you're going to want to use this, but you're also going to have to use another brush in order to uh, apply the pigment fixture. I'm going to lower down this music. Okay. So I'm going to use my very beat up brush here. I can't even remember who made this. I think this was by Army Painter. Actually, no. I'm not going to use that. There is a reason why. I am going to use this very cheap brush that I got it from Walmart. This is like one of their $4 sets. Comes with a bunch of them. And but this is going to work perfect for my purposes. Wow, okay, that's a new thing. Anyway, so first things first, I want to use the Africa dust. So I want some buildup inside the wheel wells. Okay, so I'm going to take this right here. You see how it's nice and thickly applied? And I'm going to do it over this part of my palette. The reason being is. I want whatever's left over to be collected 
put some right there because I might mix there'll be a nice little mix later I'll put some of the light dust over here so we're just going to do one side real quick now you see it's on there now you take your pigment fixer I'm going to have to open it up off camera because I want to keep that on there now there's a few ways you can use the pigment fixer you don't have to use a brush you can use a dropper if you like um, personally I don't have a dropper available so I'm just going to go ahead and hopefully this will work Okay, no, because the tip's messed up. That's all right. I have another brush I can use. Plenty of brushes. There we go. This is the one I was using earlier. So you just take it in there, and you're going to let it flow right over. Just, just tap it on there so it flows on. There you go. Like I said, I'm going to have to pause this video at some point because this stuff does take about an hour, two hours to dry, and it's already like three in the morning. And I'm doing this after, as I have just come out of work. So you definitely want all this to go over here, so on and so forth. I'm going to get inside that wheel well a little bit more. And let's get this wheel well also just a little bit more. This is why I recommend the uh, airbrush thinner because depending on how heavy you go, you might be using quite a bit of this stuff. And it does give it a nice natural dust effect as you can see. Now it's not fully dried yet. Obviously, like I said, it's going to take a little while. So we're going to put this one put this down real quick. So I can go ahead and start on a tire. Now since my dust has already been kind of mixed up over here, I'm just going to pick up at random cuz I do want to mix. Don't be stingy. I'm going to get some over here as well. I know some of you are like, oh, dude, you're fracking up the paint job you did on the rim. Well, you know, it is what it is. See how it just goes right through? That's going to give it, a, like I said, a nice natural look to it. I'm going to have to put a little bit thicker on here. Now, unfortunately, this stuff is not dropping like it should. I should have a big drop on here so I don't have to actually touch the plastic, touch the model. So what's happened is you can see it's building up on here. And it's okay. It's not that big a deal. Just kind of put it in there, brush it on. and add some more there we go so we're gonna let this this sucker dry for a while and you know what I already got the tires all set up so let's go ahead and get those done real quick um, like I said just do a nice mix of stuff on here I'm just I'm just mixing up all this pigment and you don't have to if you don't want to of course obviously go as thick or as thin as you want Now I'm just brushing it off. Now this stuff is very light. It, it's like baby powder, more or less, once you start using it. So you want to be careful on when you're dusting it. 
because it does go everywhere. Um, for those wondering what color I used paint, or what paint color I used for the tires, I used Vallejo Gray Black. It's like a rubber color. It's just a personal preference that I like. You know what? Screw it. Let me put some of this stuff on here. Now, uh, since I have some on there, another thing you can do, once you have it on there, just kind of, whoops, helps if I show you. Just take it, take it out, and tap it on. It's another method of doing this. Give you more dusting, and it will adhere. It will also adhere. I think that's what I'm going to do for this one. Instead of actually brushing it on, I think I'm just going to tap it on here. Put that there. I'm sorry if this is a boring video. Just something I thought I'd do real quick. Now the same method can be applied for your other scale models as well, be it mecha or tanks, whatever what have you, other model cars. Same basic principle. And don't let anybody tell you you did it wrong because you're not. If you watched a couple of videos and you put a whole bunch of dust on there because you want it dusty, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's your model. You do what you feel is best for your best interest and for your gaming. I've always said that. Don't ever let anybody tell you that is not correct. I'm going to make this one like super dusty. Now I will say that this part that I'm doing right here where I'm dipping it all in, all up in that stuff is incorrect. You shouldn't do that. Like so what should be happening is there should be enough collected on the tip of the brush that you just barely touch it and it drops right on. I should not have all this collected on the brush, but it's all right. You can see this is what happens. I'm just going to brush it off real quick. Let's go ahead and then I'm going to have to do that real quick to it. Good enough. We got one super dusty, one not so dusty. All right, so to clean this off, you can just go ahead and put it right in there. I'm not going to mess it up. Get a whole bunch on there and just with your towel, which I'm doing off camera, or rather your uh, paper towel, just take it off. There you go. So, not everything is done on here. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side real quick while I've got your attention. I haven't done the back yet. I'm going to go ahead and dust up the back. The back I want to do it in a slightly different way. Let's go ahead and get that taken care of over here in the front. Sorry about the shakes. Well, don't worry about this pigment thick. Excuse me. Oh boy. Don't worry about the pigment fixer messing with your paint job. It will not. No, you don't even need to dull coat it. I just did because it was just a little bit too shiny for my taste. Let's get that going right there. 
But yeah, you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to mess up your paint job. If it does, it might just be a bad reaction to something. So here we go. Yeah, that's looking good already. Nice and dirty. This isn't even the um, typhus corrosion part yet that I want to do. Okay, so for this, I want it to be really caked on over here. This is why I'm pre-treating it. Taking all this dust, and I am just sprinkling it on there. Let me do it again. So I want the dust to be kind of thick and chunky. Alright. So we are done. And you see it's on here on the rear lights, the stoplight. Um, don't have to worry about that. Because since I did not get any fixer on it, it's going to actually come off. So what you can do, just tap it, or even blow it, which, excuse the noise, and it's gone. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video now, or rather I'm going to stop the video. Oh, you know what, I should, damn it. I need to get some on the front, obviously. I need some some stuff on the front. Oh, man. I should have caught that earlier. Well, you live and learn, right? back here there we go And I'm going to give it about six hours, and I'll come back and revisit it. And then we'll look how everything looks at that point. All right. Okay, so it's been about ten hours since I last did any work on the vehicle, because, you know, I got to sleep. So, yeah, let's see what the results are. You see no gloves this time. And here is your result. doesn't come off there you go looks good in the wheel well then underneath um, I might have put a little bit too much to get in the the, uh, the exhaust pipes but that's okay you know and I could have gone a little if I was going for realism I would have had more dust come up here and cake on here but that's not what I wanted and that's fine no, no big deal. Um, it did kind of those lower turn signal lights. I did kind of overdo it over here. Um, what I did with those, well, a better example, this rear tail light. Um, what I did was I used my Molotow liquid chrome. Use the pen. Did that first. Um, I pretty much allowed 24 hours for that to dry specifically. Okay. And then I used 
the Citadel Technical Spirit Stone Red. Now this is a gel. This is not a paint. A lot of people think that this is a paint because it's in their technical paint line. Uh, let me show you real quick. But this is actually a gel. This is not a paint. Okay. So you can brush it on, but it won't have the effect of looking like a bubble. So basically what I did was I used one of my old brushes. This one right here. You basically just dip it in. You do not brush it on. You just kind of dip it on there and fill it. Fill it to form. Fill it to the shape. Do like two or three layers. You can do it all at once. This stuff doesn't dry very fast. It does take about 15-20 minutes for the spirit stone to um to dry decently. But it is a gel and it will get on there. And you see it still has that nice mirror effect on there because of the chrome. Now you can also use like a silver paint or an aluminum paint and that's fine. It'll still reflect. It just reflects a little bit more with the chrome pen. So you know you don't have to go out of your way to get the chrome pen but I really like the chrome pen. Um, but yeah that's how you would use that to get that effect. So yeah overall I'm very pleased with how it looks and for the wheels I will I do just have to glue those on that's one actually let me go ahead and get like two or three of them in here hoping it'll focus there we go And here's another one. I just got to glue them onto the vehicle itself. And yeah, it did cover up the Matchbox uh, logo that I put on there. But you can still see a lot of the, the rim, the silver from the rim. And it's not a silver. It's actually jet engine exhaust. Um, what I used for that inner rim is actually this stuff right here. Uh, Vallejo Metal Color. 77.713 jet exhaust this stuff is great it's meant for an airbrush if you use this um, shake it really well um, I would honestly suggest getting an agitator to put in there as well if you pick this stuff up but this is great metal stuff you don't need to use it with the airbrush you can just put it in drop it into your paint palette and brush it on it goes on super smooth literally one layer of paint you don't have to do layer after layer after layer one layer of paint will do the job um great 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 stuff can't recommend it enough i use it pretty much for any metal on my mecha models that i use my gundams and my valkyries and everything like that see so yeah, there's the other tire and see see how it got into the sipes right there and again brushing it not coming off so yeah, there you go. That is pretty much the results. And again, this was just a very basic video on how to do it. Um, like I said, there are other videos that go a little bit more into depth. But to be honest, there's not much more to it than putting on your pigment, using your fixer, and that's about it. There's, there's not much else really you need to know about this type of thing. So yeah. That's it. Have a good one. Take it easy. I hope you found this informative. Um, if you think I can improve on this video, you know, let me know. Like I said, if there's an interest in basic paint apps and weathering for Hot Wheels, um, let me know. I'll, I'll make a video. That's no problem. It'll probably be pretty long because I do like to explain things. But yeah, like I said, this is a really simple paint job. This is actually three cars. It's the scene, uh, Country Club Muscles, the main thing. Can't remember which vehicle I used to get these engine parts off of. And then these wheels are from a Matchbox uh, MBX 4x4. Basically, they're not Jeep Willys model. So, yeah, there you go. But yeah, let me know. Comments and questions are welcome, positive or negative. Hope you guys have a good day, and I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy. Happy gaming, everybody.